I think for the end of the dinosaurs, yes, we would have seen a lot of really shocking stuff. So I'll tell you what it was like. The impact happened in the Caribbean uh, on the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. The meteorite hits, it, it, it was huge, it, it, it was many miles across, it penetrated deep into the Earth's crust, and then the equal and opposite reaction is an enormous volume, millions of tons of rock and dust come back up. But a large amount of the material going up is dust, and that goes high in the atmosphere. That encircles the Earth. Something like half an inch thick of dust was in the upper atmosphere, which was enough to cut out the light of the sun. And so on the ground, anywhere in the world, you would have felt that. Uh, you would have seen the lack of sun, and you would have felt the cold. At the same time, a heat wave would radiate out from the crater in all dimensions, and this would be um, partly caused by the energy of the impact, um, and that would burn up the forests and burn up anything in its way. A lot of it isn't instant. The plants may die because of cold. They'll die eventually because of the lack of daylight, but that would take a little bit longer because the reverberations, the, the movement of dust and so on takes days, maybe a week. Oh, it was that fast? The, the dust in the upper atmosphere, that might have stuck around for months and kept the earth black, but I think the worst of it would be over in a week. And in some of the other ones that weren't maybe just because of that direct kind of immediate cause, would it have been really different? Like, Yeah, I think all the other events wouldn't have seemed so immediately, dramatically, amazingly apocalyptic. All the other ones that I mentioned um, are caused, it seems, by earthbound processes, not by some extraterrestrial thing. And the, the, most, of them are, most of them are explained by volcanic eruption. And this is because of the gases. So, of course, we think of volcanoes. You don't want to get too close to an erupting volcano because you get washed, you'll get swept away in the molten lava. Well, yeah, yeah, of course. And, and with a big volcanic eruption, that would have a big effect, but not worldwide. The, the worldwide effects come from the gases that come out of the volcano. Some of them, like sulfur dioxide, um, has a quick effect. It has a cooling effect. But when sulfur dioxide mixes with water and oxygen in the atmosphere, it produces sulfuric acid, which isn't good. And it has a bad effect, not only in killing the trees, but it leaches away uh, nutrients from the soil. And so that part of forests that are maybe affected by acid rain can stay blasted and bleak for centuries because it takes a long time for the soil to redevelop and, and acquire the minerals that are needed by the, the plants and so on. But when you have a volcanic eruption on a global scale, but let me reword that, when you have a huge volcanic eruption, that it can actually have effects over the whole, the whole of the Earth. And most of those effects are partly from the sulfur dioxide, but partly from the greenhouse gases. And there's a whole bunch of greenhouse gases that come out of volcanoes, particularly carbon dioxide, but also methane and water vapor. So this is what was happening at the end of the Permian and at the end of the Triassic and probably at the end of the Devonian, at least, those other big five. The warming has a huge effect because if, if you raise the temperature by five degrees, 10 degrees, um, life can't survive that. You know, we, we think that many, or, many plants and animals are happy at hot temperatures. Well, not really. Anything above 30 C is really not acceptable, 35 in the oceans, the main effect is from high temperature and acid. How long it would all take to kill, we don't know, but the, um, nonetheless, the killing effects of huge volcanic eruptions are deadly, and, and they've happened many times.